Whether you believe it was Edward de Vere, Francis Bacon, or Will Shakespeare of Stratford who wrote Shakespeare's sonnets, it's agreed that the first 126 sonnets address someone scholars refer to as the fair youth, and the remaining sonnets concern someone they call the Dark Lady. As far as the actual number of Dark Lady sonnets, some believe there are 28, others 26, referring to the last two as the Greek sonnets. In this video, I'm going to show how the number of fair youth sonnets reveal them to be Henry Rosely, the third Earl of Southampton. I think one hint that the sonnets are dedicated to Henry Rosely are the initials Mr. W.H. beginning line 3, as in the third Earl of Southampton. However, since the initials aren't H.W. but are instead reversed as W.H., many scholars are unable to agree that it's Rosely. Even though the previous two Shakespeare poems, Venus and Adonis and Lucrece, are both dedicated to Henry Rosely, Mr. W.H., it's just not him. It's William Herbert, or whoever. Maybe the initials were printed this way so as to not draw too much attention to Southampton, but it may have been simply a matter of function. If you've been following these videos, or Alexander Waz, you know that the dedication is designed to be written into a Cardano grid. Vince Galloway figured out that if you read the first and last letters of the opening lines of the dedication, they spell out a message reading TT Map by DSF. The dedication is signed by someone named TT, who is Edward de Vere, which I explained in an earlier video. And the message is that this is his map and was made by John D. The SF possibly stands for subphenum, meaning towards the end, suggesting that D worked on this map towards the end of his life. Within the map or grid, rabuses can be drawn, and Waugh discovered that they reveal where Edward de Vere is buried. They read, To the Westminster at South Cross Isle St. Peter's, Edward de Vere lies here. One of the things that convinced me the map and rabuses are legitimate is a rabus that spells the Westminster, which is in the shape of Westminster Abbey. John D. used a delta or D to sign his work, and Waugh points out the single letter D where the courtyard is. Wall also shows how the name Mr. W.H. from the dedication appears as part of the letters composing the Westminster Rabus, and if the name read Mr. H.W., the W would be outside of the Rabus, the H would be inside it, and the Rabus would spell the Hestminster. So in order for the Rabus to spell the Westminster, John D. spelled Henry Rosie's initials as Mr. W.H. and I believe put it at the beginning of line 3 indicating the 3rd Earl of Southampton. Even without having to realize there's a map concealed within the dedication, and considering that the previous two poems were dedicated to the Earl, I doubt that John D. thought people would have such a difficult time figuring out that Mr. W.H. is Rosalie. All right, now something I've brought up many times before is how in Monus Hieroglyphica, John Dee explains that he uses the Kabbalistic methods of Gematria, Notericon, and Zeruf. I show how each of these methods are used in the sonnets in video 55 and its addendum. Now how we figure out that Henry Rosley is the fair youth is, the last fair youth sonnet is Sonnet 126. In Sonnet 126, there are a couple italicized words before the missing two lines of the closing couplet, audit, which as a noun means a hearing and an official examination of accounts or records, and as a verb, to examine and verify accounts, and quietus, meaning a final clearing of accounts. Whatever else these two words might mean to the sonnet and these missing lines below, I think we're being told to do some accounting, because something's missing. If we go back to the beginning of the sonnets, we see that the number for sonnet 1 is missing, which means if we do an audit and count the sonnets, there are actually 125 numbered fair use sonnets. So because there are 125 numbered fair use sonnets, it's in sonnet 125 where we're going to look for clues as to the identity of the fair youth. Sonnet 125 begins with a double V spelling the words Wirt Ot. In French, the word Vert, V-E-R-T, means green. Edward de Vere sometimes used double V to sign his name, and here we have double V-E-R-T, a hint at de Vere, de Vere's name in French. 
The word is pronounced wort, but the hint at Devere's name, Devere, is a clue that the T is silent, and that the letters E-R-T are to be pronounced er, which is the sound of the letter R. We then replace the letters E-R-T with the letter of the sound they make, the letter R. Replacing E-R-T, pronounced er, with the letter R, we have double V-R, followed by the next word, ought, spelling rot, or possibly rote. No one knows for sure how Rosalie's name was pronounced. Many believe it was Rothesley. More recently, it's been suggested that it may have been Rosely, which is how I pronounce it in these videos. I know I don't include the TH when I say it, pronouncing it Rosely, but I think that's the intent. And it may have been that only certain people pronounced it this way. Now, whether this word is rot or wrote, what we have here is the pronunciation of the first five letters of Rosely's last name. Names of eight letters or more are abbreviated by spelling the first five letters. Rosely or Rothesley's name is abbreviated W-R-I-O-T, which is pronounced either rot or wrote. If the remaining letters of his name were included, it would look like this and would be pronounced Rothesley or maybe Rosely. All right, so beginning sonnet 125, the number of numbered fair use sonnets, we have letters that are pronounced as the abbreviated name for Rosely or Rothesley. Looking at the other two sonnets on the page, the large letters they begin with are N and Y. There are many nicknames for Henry. One that's found throughout Europe is Henny, H-E-N-N-Y. In French, the letter H isn't pronounced. Henry is Henri, and I think Henny is pronounced Inny. I couldn't find out for sure, but that's how the online translator pronounced it. And the translator pronounced Henri correctly, so maybe someone who speaks French and sees this video can let me know. Y is pronounced E, and we have N-Y or N-E, Inny, which is how I think Henny is pronounced in French. After the N and Y, the next large letter is the double V spelling rot or rote, the pronunciation of Rosalie's abbreviated last name. So on the page with Sonnet 125, there's an acrostic spelling and nickname for Henry, followed by an abbreviation for Rosalie. Now check it out. The diminutive name for Henry is Hen, H-E-N. The gematria value of the letters are H is equal to 8, E is equal to 5, and N is equal to 13. The abbreviated name for Rosalie is W-R-I-O-T. In the Latin alphabet, there is no letter W, but a W is comprised of two Vs, each equal to 20. So the gematria value of W, or two Vs, is 40. R is equal to 17, I is equal to 9, O is 14, and T equals 19. Altogether, the gematria value of the abbreviated name for Henry Rosely is equal to 125. The same sonnet number where we found Rosely's last name. Henry Rosely is the suspected fair youth. The gematria value of his abbreviated name is 125, and there are 125 numbered fair youth sonnets. At the beginning of sonnet 125, there are letters spelling the pronunciation of his abbreviated last name, and on the same page is an acrostic spelling the pronunciation of a French nickname for Henry. I believe this was all done by design to let us know that Henry Rosely was the fair youth. Something else going on is that the first 17 of the fair youth sonnets are also known as the procreation sonnets. The poet is trying to convince the fair youth to marry and have children. It seems he was successful because, in the 18th sonnet, things change, and the youth now lives forever in these lines of verse. According to Alexander Waugh's theory, the first 17 sonnets represent Edward de Vere's Earl number. People live on through their children, and the youth now living forever in sonnet 18 means that a child has been born. Henry de Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford, who was fathered by Henry Rosely. 
Looking again at sonnet 125, notice how the words, who bore, are typeset above and below the number of the sonnet. The dedication tells us that Mr. W. H. is the only begetter of these ensuing sonnets, which scholars believe means he inspired their creation. I think the words, who bore, above and below the sonnet number equivalent to Henry Rosie's name, allude to what the dedication is saying here. These words tell us that he's the only begetter of the sonnets, but I also think they tell us that he fathered a son. The dedication is twelve lines, and in column twelve of the grid, I found a rabus in the shape of scales, which reads, Henry four T ensuing son. There are a couple of words in the bowls of the scales, rose and another word that can be spelled a few different ways. I've shown this rabus before, and we'll have an update in another video. But we can see here that Henry four T, meaning Oxford, is the ensuing son. Not only did the begetter inspire the creation of these ensuing sonnets, he also beget an ensuing son, and I think we're being told that it was Henry Rosely who bore the sonnets and the son. Alright, like I showed earlier, the last fair use sonnet is 126. We did some auditing, hinted at by the italicized words, and discovered that there were actually 125 numbered fair use sonnets. Something else is, by its definition, a closed couplet is a pair of lines that are grammatically complete, or at least logically complete on their own. Grammatically, it's a single line divided in two. Again, the italicized words, audit and quietus, hint at doing some accounting, which requires math. And if we divide the sonnet number 126 by 2, the number of missing lines of the couplet, we get 63. Whether those words and missing lines are a hint to do that or not, Sonnet 63 is in the very middle of the Fair Youth Sonnets, and when we turn to Sonnet 63, we find there's this unnecessary character added to the end of one of its lines, which happens to be the 17th line of the page, Edward de Vere's Earl number. The character is not a bracket. It's a three. Just like with the John Wright edition of the sonnets, a number three was modified to make this character. So why was this done, and why was it added to the end of line 17? The sonnet is about the poet preserving the fair use beauty through verse. Taking a closer look at the line, it reads, His beauty shall in these black lines be seen. I can't remember which video it was, but Alexander Waugh explained that black lines has a double meaning. On the surface, black lines refers to the color of ink and printed lines of verse, but as Waugh explained, black lines also refers to an illegitimate line, meaning an illegitimate child, and that this line is describing Rosalie's beauty being seen in his son, Henry de Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford. I think the three characters a hint not only at Rosalie's Earl number, but it's telling us to check out Sonnet 3 to find out more. The number for Sonnet 3 is on line 3, again Rosalie's Earl number, and hidden within this sonnet I found a message to him. To read it we start here. A fellow researcher, Ron Raphael, pointed out that at the beginning of Sonnet 4, or Vere in Dutch and German, there are the letters V and V, initials for the De Vere family motto, Vero Nihil Varius, meaning nothing truer than truth. Next, 1740 is Edward de Vere's cipher, and I figured out that if you count 17 lines from the top of the page, there are three letter D's along the left margin. The 17th line is then followed by the number for sonnet 4, which is typeset directly over a letter D. 17 lines, 4D. 174D is a homophone of 1740. And line 17 reads, Die single, and thine image dies with thee. Continuing upwards are the letters S.D., a Latin abbreviation for Saludum Dicet, which is a salutation meaning sends greetings. 
Next is this string of words and letters spelling four D-O-O-T calls. D-O-O-T is pronounced duty, so the acrostic reads for duty calls. Duty means a moral or legal obligation or a task or action that someone is required to perform. This fits the message of the procreation sonnets from the poet to the fair youth, or Henry Rosalie, to marry and have children, but I think there are also initials here. In French, de means two. Du t is two t. And two t are the initials found on the sonnet's cover, dedication, and at the beginning of sonnet 122. Each set of initials is printed with a differently shaped letter T. No two T's match, and I explain why this is in video 55 and its addendum. In the same videos, I also explain why, when read as two T's, they stand for Edward de Vere. So what this acrostic is spelling, for duty calls, is also saying for two T or Edward de Vere calls. The acrostic ends with two letters, WT. Earlier I showed how the abbreviation for Rosalie is the first five letters, W-R-I-O-T. Another way names are abbreviated is by spelling the first and last letters. The first and last letters of W-R-I-O-T are W-T. That's the acrostic translated. Everything is now read in reverse or down to up. Beginning with the De Vere family motto, it reads, Nothing truer than truth. 1740 sends greetings for duty calls Rosalie, or for 2T meaning Edward De Vere calls Rosalie. There are 126 fair use sonnets. When they're audited, hinted at in Sonnet 126, we discover that Sonnet 1 isn't numbered, so there are 125 numbered fair use sonnets. The Gamatra value of Henry Rosie's abbreviated name is equal to 125, and Sonnet 125 begins with letters that are pronounced the same as the abbreviation for Rosalie. In the very middle of the fair use sonnets is sonnet 63, and there's a misshapen 3, Rosalie's Earl number, at the end of line 17, Oxford's Earl number. The line says that Rosalie's beauty will be seen in his illegitimate child. I took the 3 as a clue to go to sonnet 3 and found an acrostic message from Edward de Vere to Rosalie, greeting and telling him for duty calls. I think all of this connects Rosalie to being the father of the child alluded to in Sonnet 18, Henry de Vere. Now according to Waugh's theory, Oxford needed a male heir, and he may have had a mistress, Penelope Rich, Countess of Devonshire, who he asked to be a surrogate mother for a child he would raise as the 18th Earl of Oxford. He asked Rosalie to be the father, and what may have happened was that, after granting the favor, Penelope Rich and Rosalie continued to see each other, creating the love triangle written about in the sonnets. Another take on this is, Rosalie and Rich could have been seeing each other behind Oxford's back. Rich became pregnant, and to save Rosalie from an embarrassing situation, Oxford secretly adopted the child. Either way, Oxford's problem of not having a male heir was solved. Whatever the details, could Penelope Rich have been the dark lady of the sonnets? A nickname for Penelope is Pen, P-E-N, and in his video, Willoughby His Avisa, Part 2, Waugh explains how certain words hint at Penelope Rich in Sonnet 84. Another nickname for Penelope is Penna, P-E-N-N-A, which is the Italian word for feather or quill, meaning a pen. I figured out that the gematria value of the letters spelling the name Penna Rich are equal to 84. Alright, now I don't know if this is something we're supposed to figure out, but I noticed it and found it interesting. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, everyone agrees there are 126th Fair Youth Sonnets. 
Some think there are 28 Dark Lady sonnets, but others think there are 26 because, though they revolve around the love triangle between her, the poet, and the fair youth, the last two sonnets focus on the god Cupid and refer to them as the Greek sonnets. Now here's the thing. Recall when we figured out the gematria value of Henry Rosie's abbreviated name, Hen, H-E-N, equals 26. 26 is the same number of Dark Lady sonnets, the number equivalent to this abbreviated name for Henry. In his video named Adon's Flower, I apologize that this image from it isn't more clear, Wa shows how the name for the turkey hen was Penelope, and how the mythical character Penelope was named after guinea or turkey hens. Wa then connects the name Penelope to the guinea hen flower that grows in the meadows of Oxford. It's specifically the guinea hen or turkey hen flower that means Penelope, but is the word hen enough to identify Penelope Rich here? I don't know, and I couldn't find out if hen was a nickname for her. Now when I hear the word hen, I think of a bird that lays eggs. So does the word hen imply the role the dark lady played as a woman who provided offspring, meaning the son, for Edward de Vere? Again, I don't know. But that's twice we have this number 26, equal to the name H-E-N. That leaves the Greek sonnets, for which there are two. The first thing I thought of was the first number that appears in the sonnets. Like I showed earlier, the number for sonnet 1 is missing. The first printed number of the sonnets is 2. We started our count at the beginning with the number of fair use sonnets, followed by the Dark Lady. The number of the last two sonnets brings us back to the beginning, to sonnet 2, the first numbered sonnet. Count the lines, and the number for sonnet 2 is on line 17, Oxford's Earl number. The number 2 on line 17 is immediately followed on the next line by the first double V that appears in the sonnets, which happens to be followed by the letters H-E-N, the abbreviation for Henry, followed by the word 40. Two Vs equal 40, and I've talked about this number and how it connects to Edward de Vere in other videos. Could it be that the sonnets are divided into three groups with these numbers so that we find the name Hen, the abbreviation for Henry, three times? If so, then we're told that the poet, the third person in the love triangle, is Edward de Vere. Whether that's a legitimate find or not, I feel confident that Henry Rosely is identified as the fair youth through the value of his name. And the acrostic in Sonnet 3 is a personal message from Edward de Vere telling him that it's his duty to have a child. There are more clues in the sonnets regarding the story of Edward de Vere, Rosalie, and Henry de Vere, which I'll be going over in another video. Thanks to the videos of Alexander Waugh, to Ron Raphael, and to you for watching this one.